Today's topic is transitioning from corporate to entrepreneurship with Anita Heidema. Welcome to the Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to the Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well being. You're listening to the Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks, to be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Are you feeling burned out or finding it hard to focus on your goals, or are you in transition? Well, you're not alone. We all need to activate our superpowers. These are the internal strengths and abilities we all already have, but don't use all the time. Superpowers can be cultivated and they include empathy, love, intuition, courage, and more. As always, this episode is brought to you by Well Woman Life, a global community of women living our best lives. Whether it's your health, relationships, your money, or making an impact in your community and the world, Well Woman Life has you covered. You've made a commitment to not settle, to use your voice, and to live your best life. Well Woman Life offers annual memberships, workshops, and retreats to support you. Check out wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our growing community. Now back to the show. Happy holidays to everyone. Today's topic is transitioning from corporate to entrepreneurship. And hopefully by the end of the show, you'll be inspired to use your life lessons, take the leap with an upcoming opportunity, and create the life you really want. As you can tell, my voice is really, really scratchy today. I'm getting over a little cold over the holidays, Uh, but I definitely wanted to bring you this interview because it's amazing. Uh, My guest today is Anita Heidema, a mindset coach and business strategist. So for all of you out there in transition um, between uh, opportunities or trying to make a new move in your career, this is a great interview for you. Anita is a best-selling author of Vitality Knox, an international speaker and a business entrepreneur. She helps entrepreneurs develop their life and business on their terms with proper mindset and strategies. She has 27 years of experience in management, operations, and sales for large corporations and helps business owners be successful as entrepreneurs. So in this episode, Anita and I talk about finding your life lessons, how entrepreneurs find work-life balance, that's one of my favorite topics, and um, also how to program your subconscious. The free giveaway today is a chapter from Anita's book, Vitality Knox, and you can get it at wellwomanlife.com slash 096 show. You can also join the conversation with us in the Well Woman Life community group at wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook. Now to my interview with Anita Heidema. Welcome to the program. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's so good to talk to you. You know, we met at a um, business entrepreneur uh, conference. And so I love now that we're, um, I'm interviewing you on my show. Um, So Anita, I wanted to start by asking you, you know, when I introduced this show, I let the listeners know about your bio and and some of that. But I really want to know from you, who are you in the world today as a woman, as a uh, business owner, as you know, who, who are you in the world today? Um, it's not very well put, you know, because a lot of times we go behind our titles and our achievements and what that is, but it doesn't always mean, you know, truly who you are inside and and what your passions are, you know, it's, it's sort of what your accomplishments, but there's so much more to that. Right. Yeah. And, you know, 
you know, as, as life is a journey and, and carries on, we just have developed and learned so much. And it was interesting. I saw um, the actual definition of entrepreneur the other day, and it's finding weaknesses in areas and improving on them. And I thought, you know, it's such a wonderful way of putting that. And, and many times I think of that, I, I'm always looking to, to helping other people and to creating more, you know, I've been through uh, many challenges in life as many of us have. And, you know, it's, it's, it's finding the best situation, I guess the glass half full and, and where that is. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm in a place right now where I've, I've learned so much. I turned 50 this year and, um, you know, there's a lot of wisdom that, that comes with that in, in learning from those life lessons along the way. Um, that's, that's made me who, who I am today. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And Anita, what are you working on right now and how does it impact women's lives and well being? Oh, I'm, I'm working on lots of projects. I've, I've got a TV show, I've got a podcast. Um, and it's all about helping people learn from their life lessons. And actually, uh, my book, Vitality Knox is the same thing. And it's really relating a lot to to entrepreneurs and what's out there. And, you know, I also have a program that's coming out in November, which is um, Rich Life and Business. And it's, it's really important, um, especially as entrepreneurs, but everybody else um, to live a rich life and build that foundation that is so important to be able to move you into those successes in your life and those strategies that that you are be able to have in place. You know, I know my Myself when I wasn't healthy and I wasn't taking care of myself and I wasn't happy in what I was doing, I was failing at other things, even though I knew the strategies. So to me, it's so important that you build that foundation. And so the program I'm, I'm releasing next month is Rich Life and Business. Um, and that's where it strikes your core and, and really into your heart and who you are and what that is to build that strength. Um, and then that leads in, of course, to my business program that I have from January to um, December for entrepreneurs that gets into the nitty gritty, like real hard stuff you know, motivation and and business plans and sales and social media and all the rest of that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. And so let's uh, go back a little bit and um, dig into some of what you just said, which is what, what was your life like before you had those, um, that sort of awakening or, or, you know, whatever the process was, what was your life like and how, how did it shift? Like, what was the, what was the downside and then how did it shift? Major um, shifting things that happened. One was, you know, I was in a marriage with a narcissist for 20 years, which was, was pretty brutal. Um, so when I was able to get myself out of that, um, you know, it was, it was quite something to, to move forward. And I, I always worked in the corporate world and realizing that and feeling that, you know, climbing the corporate ladder was so important. So in that transition with everything that happened, you know, I'd lost my health. I had lost, you know, the focus and direction where I wanted to go. And my true passion was to be an entrepreneur. And, you know, even though I had so many successes in the corporate world at the end of the day, you know, I found out I was really just a number and, you know, I was in, I was in the street, you know, gone from six figures to zero. And that's a whole other long story. But, you know, I literally had two mortgages, just divorced, you know, realizing that I had to earn an income, figuring out what that was, you know, and, and losing your identity, because, mm-hmm. you know, I had a high identity, you know, working in a, in a billion dollar global company that, you know, I was, I was sort of relating to and letting my health go. So that was probably one of the biggest things um, was that, you know, I always say when you when you fall in really low, and you're sitting there, you know, crying, crying yourself to sleep, can barely get yourself moving and knowing you have to, and there's no other choice. Cause you know, I didn't really have a big family or big support system. I had to pick myself up and figure out, you know, how to work from corporate and having, you know, a marketing department and, and all these things behind you to all of a sudden being an entrepreneur. And that's a huge, huge shift. Mm-hmm. And in what that was, and then I think one of the other ones was, you know, caring for my parents that, that passed away and my mom you know, who had, you know, because around that time that I became an entrepreneur, um, my mom got really sick and they said she had Alzheimer's, which turned out to be Lewy body dementia that I have a foundation for now. And that's a whole other long story. But seeing that transition that life is so short, you know, mm. and, and knowing what that was. So that's where I built up, you know, that strength and that foundation in myself to really move forward and not, you know, I always think of that as that oak tree, you know, that you, mm-hmm. you sway in the wind, but nothing's going to unroot you. And, you know, that's, that's what you have to do. And that's what I did for myself and then manage my business and the strategies around my business, because my mom needed more care and I only had 24 hours in a day. How do I monetize a business 
you know, so that's when I started to get, you know, a little bit more online with what I was doing and, and combine it with different ways to be able to earn an income and have that flexibility to care for her. And, you know, that was a huge transition and, and, and change as well so at that all, time. This this all happened around the same time, the divorce, the, the job and your parents? Yeah. Wow. So the divorce, the divorce happened a year later um, was the, I call it a job loss. It really, they wanted me to go somewhere else. And um, I said no. And then they said, okay, bye bye. So I really didn't end up getting any kind of money or package or whatever you call that. So I literally went from six figures to nothing. And then in that time, my mom also um, got sick. And and because I'm the only, all my family's in Holland and I have my brother in Vancouver, I'm the one that was, you know, we were best friends. Mm. Um, you know, I was sort of there trying to manage all of this at the same time. So I had to learn really quick first how to be an entrepreneur, which is a huge step on its own. Anyone that's made that transition, you know, from, you know, getting a steady paycheck, you know, and, and, and directing employees and, and, you know, being, I I thought I was the hero in the company, you know, and then all of a sudden that's pulled from you and you have to be able to, you know, take care of yourself and know that you can still do it. And it's in you change that mindset because all of a sudden now, you're a, you're a lone wolf. I had a secretary that took care of things. Right. And all of a sudden I was like, okay, I don't know how to do this. You're realizing, right? Yeah. So that was a huge transition. And then how do I run my business? Cause at that time I was seeing clients one-on-one, right. And that's how I started building. And I also tied it originally. It was around travel. So I was, when I was in the corporate world, I actually trained myself as a coach and it took six years because they had hired me a coach. So that's why I knew what coaching was. Be- before that coaching, like now everybody seems to be a coach, but at that time, you know, this is 12 years ago, um, or even more, I think now, um, there wasn't that many coaches out there. And I thought, you know, is it therapy? Or are they trying to am I playing baseball or basketball? But I learned the power of what coaching was. And I had trained myself not to know that so many years later, which is, you know, my business is now seven years old, um, that I would be using that. And I tied coaching with travel, you know, and mm-hmm. get a way to find your way and bringing, you know, clients away to find out what they want in their business and their life and then bringing them back and bringing, you know, when you get back to reality, it's not always, you know, rosy because when you, when you travel, of course, you know, you, you can either be on a beach or you explore or you, you know, do different things. And that's how my business originally started. But then my mom got sick Hmm. and I had to figure out how to still monetize this business and be there for her. Right. And she unfortunately is, is, is no longer um, with me, but, um, yeah, it was, it was a tough time. It really, really was. And, 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 and getting through all that and still keeping yourself afloat. Um, yeah. it's, you know, life, life hits you with your balls for sure. And it's, it's learning from them and moving forward and keeping yourself motivated and learning the right strategies. Right. Right. So I totally hear you because I, I went through the transition of leaving a, a, a job with a really high salary and, you know, going out on my own while I had a one-year-old and wanted to have another baby. So, oh wow. Yeah, it was <laughs> kind of a crazy time to do that looking back on it. Like, what was I thinking? But I'm so glad I mm-hmm. did it. Um, when I did. But um yeah, so thinking about w- what you were saying, what what was the I mean, thinking about your definition of entrepreneurship that you brought up earlier, what was the problem you were looking at solving? Well, I, I loved helping people. And that's one thing I noticed even when I was and, and, and getting teams together and, and creating something new. So, you know, my big thing in the company I work for was always working in a, like going into a different division at the time they, I was in sales originally and, um, they had done this test on me or whatever it was called and said that I was to move up in the company. And so what my strength was, was really, um, inspiring, empowering people, so I'd, I'd work into different departments, looking at what the weakness was in those departments, and then being able to put that together with strategies to move forward. So I would have these big boardrooms where I would do SWOT analysis. Okay, how are we moving forward with this? And that was always my sweet spot. And, and knowing that, you know, I don't always know everything, but as long as you dive in there with that kind of a mindset, you can fix anything. And that's really what an entrepreneur is, you know, creating something from 
really nothing. Yeah, we watch people and what they're doing and what works and whatnot. But the, really, the end of the day, we have to look back into our heart and trust our instincts and look back to that because we can get so caught up in the maze of everything. So, you know, when I would do SWOT analysis, yes, we would, you know, we would look at the strengths and weaknesses and what the, you know, opposition was doing and, you know, look at the opportunities and all of that. But at the end of the day, you know, how did we want to move forward with, with our mission and our vision? And it doesn't change whether you're a large corporation or whether it's just, you know, a, sing, a solopreneur. Right. right. And um, it's finding that sweet spot. So when I got myself out of that, I really realized that that was where I wanted to be. So I, you know, like I said, at the time I was the master coach, you know, now I, I don't even want to call myself a coach anymore because there's so many people out there, <laughs> yeah. you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have the same meaning as it did, you know, back then. Um, but it, it is, it's, it's, it's finding what's that inside you and then working those strategies in place to still stay true to who you are. Right. So, so you know, that was sort of my sweet spot then. And I've carried it through with my business. Actually, I think there might be a lot of listeners interested in this business of coaching um, in all the different areas. And it, it is something that like everyone is doing now. So how do you uh, differentiate yourself from other coaches? And do you use other terminology like consultant or mentor? Well, I, I call myself a lot of times a strategist. I mean, you know, in some areas you'll see a mindset coach and business strategist because I ended up um, getting into hypnotherapy as well. So I talk about the mind power and, and the rest of it as well. Um, but I think what happens is, you know, people have read my book, Vitality Knots. They've seen me speak. They've been through some of my programs and they, they resonate to who I am. So I don't necessarily have to say what I do. It kind of speaks for itself in what I do. Yeah. Um, and, and people will see that, you know, online. Now, I was at a conference yesterday and there's this Italian minister that was up there and she talked about how we have to get real to what is true out there. There's so many um, mirrors and, and fog that's out there that people are getting lost in what is real. And, and that's what ends up happening is once you get out there more and I get more speaking or on podcasts or whatever that is, just like you, you know, mm -hmm. people understand the genuine you and who that is and what you can do for them. You know, I have clients that, you know, have started small little businesses and get lost in it and, you know, building up that foundation, who they are to inspire them and realize they can move forward. And it's not just a rah, rah, rah. It's really fact, you know, your brain controls in your mind where you're going to go and then put them into the program if they want to build that business, you know, business plan, strategies, you know, social media, where you want to take that. That's still true to your vision, right? So Anita, when do people come to you are at what stage, what stage are they in? Uh, are they at a real low or are they, you know, sort of where are they when they come and need your help? I find I get people from all areas and that's why I've put the rich life in business and why I actually have VIP days as well to bring people to that level. So some of them are so low, they're going to be giving up on their business and, you know, they find a little source of income there to be able to do it. They realize the value in coaching, you know, um, someone pays a hundred dollars, they can make five, 10, you know, thousand dollars so quickly. I mean, those are, those are possibilities and they realize that. So it can be anyone that's just sort of starting and realizing that, or someone that's been spinning their wheels over and over again and going, they're ready to give up or they, they know that they, you know, I have some clients that are doing really well and they want to get into, to million dollar, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's all that in between that comes. It just depends on which area in my programs they're interested in coming to. Now, how do you separate uh, business coaching versus life coaching. And do you do both? Yeah, I find that they overlap, right? So um, with my rich life in business, it's a bit more of a life type of thing that adds the business as an entrepreneur. So rich life in business that's that's coming out in November. Um, but the, the rest of it is is more in the, in the business end of things. But when I deal with a client one on one in a, in a VIP day or, or whatever that's going to be, we always talk about mindset and keeping vote motivated and talking about your life because as entrepreneurs, we know they overlap. Mm -hmm. So how do we find that work life balance? You know, I do a lot of traveling, um, in my work and, you know, the other day I was writing a blog and I'm driving through the actual, I wasn't driving personally. I was a passenger through the, through the Alps, right. And my computer's sliding from side to side. And, and these are the things you got to do as an entrepreneur sometimes. Right. But I'm able to still do it and still travel and, and enjoy. So yeah. for me, the way I've created that work-life balance 
I think a lot of my clients resonate too, and they want to know how can I do this in my business? How do I not have to be stressed all the time? You know, looking at my bank account with no money, like you, you can do it. That makes me laugh because I was, uh, I also am very big on achieving work-life balance, especially with two little kids. And yeah, I can imagine we were traveling all summer in Europe and my sister took a picture of me. I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, oh yeah, this is just what I do. But she was like, oh my gosh, this is so funny. I have to take a picture of you. I'm sitting like under a portal kind of porch thing with, you know, pouring with rain all around me. And I'm like in the only little area that's got no rain. And I've got my laptop like balanced on my knee in front of me, <laughs> like trying to get work done. And she was just like, I love it. I what love it. is going on here? But um, yeah, that's the entrepreneur life, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you want it that way, some people, you know, they've built that entrepreneur life and they just want to have a brick and mortar business nine to five and they've, they developed it that way. Right. So yeah, it's all about it's, your, your choices and what you, how yeah. you want to design it. Yeah, for sure. So Anita, can you walk us through something specific about your mindset lessons or, or some, something that you can, you know, sort of really that we can dig our teeth into here? Yeah. So I talk a lot about your subconscious mind and how we program ourselves and we live in our past and how we need to forget some of that. You know, um, I like to always, I, I want to put my clients in there, but I don't always like using their stories. So, um, I, I get into sometimes what my stories are, you know, and, and I was always told when I was younger that I'm a girl, I was a European background. So my parents, you know, no failing to them because you don't know what you don't know. And they were wonderful parents, you know, always told me that, you know, I was meant to get married one day and someone was going to take care of me. I just had to look pretty. And, and, you know, I really wasn't needed to do well in school and I wasn't needed to do well in this and that. And, you know, I didn't have to really earn an income. I just had to be pretty and be out there. And, you know, my, I was always a little bit chunkier. So, you know, my brother would tell me, oh yeah, you call me fat sacks and, you know, and, you know, those wow. things, they play in your mind, mm -hmm. right. And this, and everybody, everyone out there can, can hear those things and, and can still remember those childhood memories. Right. And it's getting rid of that, you know, yes, you know, I'm not a, um, a size 10 and, you know, yes, I'm not this or whatever, but I have, you know, a reason in life and I have those things that I can accomplish. And in some ways I almost fought those, you know, when I got high into business and at 16, I bought a car, 21, I bought a house. Like I just was so much wanting to fight the system of what my parents wanted, but it created who I was today. Right. But people carry those things and I still find it in myself. So, you know, I've created this program called mind your business class. It's in my website and it, it's a, an hour, an hour and a half, uh, program. And it's affirmations and it's program your subconscious mind. Um, I've also created some meditation CDs um, through my hypnotherapy that helps program your subconscious mind. You just listen to them. You do meditation. Um, the, I have um, in the Mind Your Business class is an actual affirmation sheet you put on your bathroom mirror. You know, I am beautiful. I am successful. I am, you know, all those things. I am, you know, confident. All those things that beat us up over the day, you know, and especially with social media nowadays, you know, our brain is constantly going and, you know, we, we wake up and we've got this great feeling of confidence and we're going to get the world. And then all of a sudden it's down to a little pee by the end of the day, right? Because <laughs> we beat ourselves up so much. So I think the process is programming that subconscious mind. And that's sort of where the start of everything happens. Isn't and that it, amazing? It's an ongoing thing too, right? Yeah. I, I just think it's so amazing that everybody is actually really just dealing with the same, you know, handful of issues. And it's all about um, sort of, you know, changing, changing your mind about it, right? The mindset mm -hmm. shift, how I can be talking to like a quote unquote, regular person, one minute, and, you know, an author of, you know, 20 best selling books, you know, millions of, of books sold and very famous author in the next moment. And they're saying the same exact thing. Like they have mm -hmm. the same exact issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just remembering that it's not just you and there is a way out and yeah, it, it's, it's amazing, but it takes you, you, practice you, and it takes work. 
Yeah, definitely. And and it's it's almost, I know I have a program called 21 Day Journey to Success. Um, it's still sitting there somewhere, but it, it basically, and I do it within the Rich Life and Business, it's building those habits. So when you get up, you know, write that journal. When you get to the bathroom and you're brushing your teeth, say those affirmations. It's building that little routine every day. And, um, you know, even with when my book um, that came out three years ago and um, became bestseller, because it was sort of a... It was a life lesson book, but you read one chapter a night and then you reflected back on your lessons back in your life and you dream about it. So it's a fictional self-help book because you would actually um, think back to where maybe you didn't listen to that lesson. And and that's the thing, like, you know, it, I don't know who, you know, your hero is or whatever that is. And, and there's so many that we have out there. You know, I love Richard Branson. Hmm. I think Oprah's phenomenal. And you look to where they've gone to from where they've been and they've learned from those life lessons, right? As opposed to just keep on doing them over and over again. And that's the message in, in, um, Vitality Knox, my book, it's Vitality is the character and Knox is those, those lessons that you keep knocking on your door, right? You don't always listen to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's so important to, to do that kind of stuff. So like you said, you know, you look at somebody and like you said, you can have someone that's a best-selling author, or somebody that is just starting a business or whatever. There's really no differences. It's just how you've learned from your lessons and moved forward and kept motivated, right? Yeah. Well, and you have to recognize the lessons in the first place mm-hmm. in order to learn from them, right? Yeah. Um, so we're moving into the segment called Superpowers for Success. First, a quick word from our sponsor. Being a well woman includes being financially healthy. Our sponsors, Lorraine L. and Kate Stalter of Better Money Decisions, are on a mission to eliminate complexity and confusion from your financial life. They replace Wall Street jargon with straightforward talk you can understand, and they create investment and retirement plans customized for your needs and your future. Download a free copy of their latest book, Don't Let Your Money Kick the Bucket Before You Do, and learn how to avoid the biggest mistakes women make when planning for retirement. Go to bettermoneydecisions.com slash wellwoman and download your free book today. So I want to ask you a few questions. The first one is, what does success in life mean for you? Um, you know, I, it's a mixture of everything because, you know, I understand that, that finances are very important, but I, I'm not run by that. You know, I call myself a heart centered entrepreneur, but at the end of the day, we have to have a business that is not a hobby. It has to be something that's going to be able to sustain you in one way or another. Um, but you know, driving yourself towards that success and that passion, what's most important to you. So, you know, we talked earlier on that. I really love helping other people and seeing, seeing them succeed. Um, to learn from something that I've done or something that I've learned to be able to move them forward and them taking that and, and, and being able to move forward. So to me, success is being able to have, you know, the freedom of time, the freedom of finances, to be able to have the freedom to be able to speak and, 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 and reach other people and help them in what they're doing. To me, that brings me success and, and makes the feeling of success. Okay. And when did you know you were really good at what you do? Um, oh, you know what? It's so hard to say because, you know, I look back when I was um, um, six, I think I was six. I lived in a neighborhood. It was actually a little bit of a rough neighborhood here in Canada. And, um, and my parents said no when they bought it originally. But my first thing I did when I was six was I I bought, I got tadpoles out of the river and I went door to door to sell these tadpoles. That, if I look back, realizes I was an entrepreneur. I would actually go back and make sure that saw if they turn into frogs. You know, I went follow up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then and then I did you know this this uh, um, tattoo thing that I would like make these little tattoos on paper and then put them on people and and that I got I was an entrepreneur all that time, but I didn't listen to that inner voice and that instinct, right? So I think if I really look back, way back then, I was an entrepreneur, but I was too much of a chicken, you know. How do you, how, do, how can I make money doing this? You know, I, I was selling flowers in a, in a bar when I was 17. I used to make a killing, but I still didn't really think it was me and that I could do that somewhere else. So when I started, you know, the corporate job and I got the title and the car and all this, I'm like, and the benefits, you know, you get lost in all of that. And I was too chicken to really step forward. So, you know, in, in doing that, I realized I was an entrepreneur and in helping others, they would come to me all the time, you know, um, to be able to do that. The company too would come to me to say, okay, how do we fix this? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And also I do think that women as women, we tend to undervalue our natural 
uh, ability and skill. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you were selling flowers and making a killing, but you were like, oh, well, this is just easy for me. This isn't, Mm -hmm. this isn't a real, you know, thing. Yeah, for sure. And we always uh, tend to second guess ourselves on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's sad. It really is. I think everyone has such a huge power within them. And, uh, that's why, you know, shows like this that you're doing is, is so important for, for women to realize that. Right. Yeah. So Anita, can you describe a personal habit that contributes to your well-being? Um, I have a a sort of a habit morning routine and evening routine. I I really love journaling. Um, It brings um, focus to what I'm doing and where I'm going and what that is, because I don't know if I was ADD or what, but my mind is constantly going. I'm thinking of ideas. I'm thinking of this and I almost need to channel it. And that's why I love meditation too, and channel it and journal it. Like, okay, this is where I'm focusing on. This is what's important because, you know, where my creativity and my brain goes, and that's where my book Vitality Knocks came, you know, I get up at three in the morning and I'm like, you need to write a book. And I'm like, what? (laughs) (laughs) And next thing I'm writing this book about this girl Vitality, who was my actual avatar and, uh, and putting this thing together, you know, so I need to be able to journalize and write these things down that are so important, um, and, and target and focus myself. So journaling and meditation to, to bring yourself forward and motivate yourself, but also calm the mind to be focused is really important. Okay. And what superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? Wow. I don't know. (laughs) Superpower. I don't know. I, I just think it's generally all over. And, um, you know, I think we all have that superpower within us and, and, but it's, it's a bit of everything, you know, I think that resilience has been huge in my life. Um, if I really was to get into depth with all the details of everything that's happened, you know, most people, their head turns and, 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 you know, I don't want to be saying what was me and all the rest of it, but, you know, resilience is huge and, and being able to take a situation and, and, and make something from it, you know? Um, so if I was to say anything about myself, I'd probably say the resilience and being able to you know, learn from that life lesson and and make it into something else. Right. Well, that goes very nicely into my next question, which is what do you do when you get knocked down? How do you get back back up? Well, you know, I, I, it it depends. I mean, there's been times where, you know, people that know me, I mean, I used to have this punching bag in my basement that was my son's. (laughs) So when I got frustrated, I really think everybody gets into their downs and you have to find that way of, of getting yourself out of it. And I have no desire to get into alcohol or into drugs. And that's what people, some people fall into. Right. So sometimes when I get, you know, remember when my mom, when she had the Alzheimer's and and I was the only one dealing with everything and, and it was hard trying to find out what was real and what wasn't real because she'd do these things things that were nasty and mean. And I get down there and I just do this punching bag and just cry and punch and get all that out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I always found that was a huge stress relief, uh, for me, you know, and, and being resilient and then sitting down, focusing, meditating, and then get myself back on my feet. You know, it was that release almost Mm -hmm. of being able to get that out and then going, okay, now I got to put on my big girl pants <laughs> and, you know, I have this, this speech I do, it's called suck it up cupcake. So I say, suck it up cupcake <laughs> and let's figure out how we're going to move forward because we know we have to make it happen. And it's not easy. I don't say it's easy. And that's why it's nice to have mentors and coaches and people to help you with those kind of things. Right. Yeah. yeah. And what advice would you give your 25 or 30 year old self? I probably was to, to, um, um, trust my instincts. I think, you know, um, you know, I'm 50, I'm 50 now I'm 50. And I think back and I'm like, why didn't I learn that lesson way back then? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm much more insightful now and, and really listening and, and, and tuning into, you know, meditating and okay, what does that mean? Where does that go? Why am I doing this over and over again? And it's, it's scary how, you know, fear can, uh, can derail you all these things from when you're told and you think you got it straight. And then all of a sudden you're wondering why you're doing that, that specific day, you know, and you're like, why did I do that? And it still comes back. And that's why my mind, your business class is a really good one because it, I call that your auto success mindset. You know, when you get into that point in your life, do I turn right or left? Mm-hmm. It has you kind of think for a second And I wish I would have trusted my instincts or maybe had done some type of a program similar to that when I was 24, 25, or been a little bit more enlightened in that time. 
to really understand it. And maybe it just wasn't my time at that. I don't know, you know, um, but if I had to, I would probably say trust my instincts more. They were there, you know, the lessons were there. Well, and that's a, such a big one because we, you know, everybody struggles with that. I think unless you're super in tune all the time with, with a very rigorous daily practice of meditation and, and everything, it, it's very easy to, um, to overlook your instincts, you know? It it's, mm-hmm. it takes hard work to keep at it. Yeah, for sure. It is. Yeah. And, and you just have to be aware. It's just an awareness thing. You know, we get so busy and caught up in our lives that we don't take. And that's why for me, journaling is so important because it just takes you back, back, no one else around you and just put your thoughts down. And I'm still a pen and paper person. You know, mm-hmm. some people want to do it on an iPod or whatever. Um, but it's so important to just have that time and tune into you, you know, and yeah. it's. Yeah. It's not woo woo. It's important. Yeah. Um, Mm. and you know, hearing your story about when you were little and, and sort of the social and family pressures to um, look a certain way and act, act a certain way because of your gender. Do you identify as a feminist? Not really, actually. And, um, I don't. I, and, and, you know, it's interesting because the, the business I got into, I was the first female sales rep um, in Canada in the paper industry. Um, and if I don't know if you know much about the paper industry, it's it's very male orientated. And even nowadays, I don't even I'm not 100 percent sure, but they have this thing called Me Too out there. The mm-hmm. hashtag Me Too. Yeah. Talking about, you know, um, you know, I, I, I survived and did it because I didn't make a huge thing about it, but just would make a point of it, but not create such a stink. And and that's why I stayed in and was able to move up in the business and in the industry and, and had the, the good reputation that I had. Right. Um, so I don't think of myself as a feminist and I think that we're all equal men and women and we should be treated like that. But so I think the women, sometimes they lose their rights for sure. But as far as a feminist, I'm not a hundred percent sure. You know, I think I maybe I need to understand a bit more of that definition and what that is because yeah. so far when I've seen some feminists come forward, it's rah, rah, you know, it should not be history. It should be her story, you know? <laughs> and it's like, what, you know, there's, there's, there's just so much craze around that. And, and maybe it's, it's some of that that's got us to where we are. I think we're such resilient people as women. Uh, we've, we've been able to really move forward and come a long way from where we did before. You know, I look back to when I first started, you know, in this business and I was the only female, um, you know, in the sales force and the first ski day, they, the first day they had for customer appreciation, it was a men's only, um, ski day. <laughs> oh, wow. And I remember going into the general manager and going, okay, you know, you hire me as a salesperson and you realize I'm female, <laughs> you know, so it was a, it was a sort of a knock, um, oh my chip gosh. Away so you could make- go on the trip. No. And I, I invited actually a female uh, client and I had, I couldn't go and she couldn't go. So I remember walking into the general manager. I had to make my, my, my presence heard, but I didn't go around rah, rah, around the office and da, 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 da. My, my presence got heard and they didn't do it again. Mm. You know, they realized that, oh yeah, we got a woman on the team. We got to realize that, you know, as opposed to, you know, going to human resources and doing all this kind of stuff. Right. I think it's just wild. yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I don't think that's was, legal right now anymore. Well, you know, and, that, and it isn't. It, and it, I don't even think it was then. But that's how I, and that's why I said I don't really think of myself as a feminist because I think a feminist might have gone maybe, to, and I could be wrong. Like I just would go to HR and make this big thing and da, 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 And I handled it just briefly with myself and it never happened again. And the, the message kind of spread along quietly throughout the office that women became more accepted, you know, Um, I I know, I know that you have, uh, I mean, there, there are definite issues with the word feminist and there's baggage with that terminology, but the, the definition I use for feminism is, um, working for, or, um, prioritizing social, political, and economic equality, in whatever mm-hmm. way, th- in whatever way. So it can be in a quiet way going to the manager and having the conversation and having that practice stop. That's, that's a show of feminism in that definition or going and holding a rally outside with signs and all the rest of it, you know, could also be in that same definition. But, um, 
Yeah. I just think people think about the word in different ways, but Mm -hmm. uh, knowing your story of how you grew up with, with such structural sexism in, in your own personal life from society and your parents. And, and as you said, your, it wasn't because they were bad parents. It's because of what I will call it is structural sexism where they, they, you know, they learned that that was the way to do things. And so they taught you that way. Um, anyway, just thinking that of all of that, it, it's very interesting that you, you know, in my eyes, you are a feminist. It's just that you don't relate to that word. So it's just interesting. Well, I think of, I don't know, I, and in the way you explained it, probably, uh, yes, I am a feminist, but I would say I'm more of a, of a, um, um, equality, um, activists maybe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's an organization, uh, women economic forum that I belong to, and I'm the, the chair in Canada for them. And they're based out of India and, you know, we've gone all over the world and I've spoken to different areas, you know, talking about equality and, 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 and raising women up and, you know, us in North America is so different than what, what's happening in India. You know, when I was there, it was, it, you know, so there's so much to be done in equality amongst everyone around the world. And it's so important. So, so, um, yeah. yes, you know, I've, 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 I've been there and that's why I, everyone's putting this me too and hashtag. And I've been mm-hmm. sort of like, Oh, I don't really want to come out, but I do. And I don't really understand it completely. Cause I'm always advocating, you know, equality. And sometimes I've had men come to me and say, well, your business is all about women and I want to be a client of yours. And I'm like, no, it's not. I mean, it's, it's meant for men and women. I find that a lot of more women, they resonate um, to me because they, they know what I've done and where I'm going. Um, but I have a lot of male clients as well. And it's that equality across the board, I think is so important. And, and, and women, they've gone, they've come so far and it, we're going so much farther. And in, in many ways, we're better than men in certain things and they're better than we in others. And, and we need to use that, our strengths and, and build. And that's the way I've always done in, in business and corporate, you know, where's our strengths and our weaknesses and how do we come together? And I think as a world, we can do that as well. Right. Mm. And, uh, as, as opposed to creating it as, you know, um, I don't know if I'm wording this right, but you know, oh, we're women, we stand wrong. Oh, we're men. We're st- why don't we come together as a collaborative? Right. And, uh, it's really important for me. So yeah, I think I'm a feminist. <laughs> I think of myself as a, you know, we could go on forever with this yeah. one. Uh, well, as a, as a equality activist, I I'm not really I sure, like that. but I like the equality activist. All right. So moving on, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is an, is so fascinating. And I ask everybody this. So, um, it, just the the variety of answers is so interesting. But um, Anita, what are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? Um, well, uh, my nightstand is magic. And I'm trying to think of who wrote that one. Elizabeth it's the girl. Gilbert. Yes, yes. <laughs> and she's the E. Pray Love, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I really like what she's coming out with, with magic. Um, but I'm in the middle of creating my rich life in biz. And it's been keeping me quite busy. So I haven't really been reading as much as, um, as I want to. So it's on my bedside, but I haven't been totally diving into it as, as I like, but, um, yeah, magic I'm really enjoying and I'm enjoying what she's come out with and, and with that and about creativity and then it's a universal creativity, you know, yeah, <laughs> and how we get these downloads and, and each one of us is creative in our own way. Yeah. And I think it's so important that people are expressing themselves. Like with me, I never thought of myself as an author, you know, I don't think of that, but yet my book has, has helped so many out there and, and finding their life lessons in being able to move forward with it, um, that, you know, I have on my title, a best-selling author, cause it became a, a best-selling book, but still, you know, it's, it's that creativity with the magic. That's so important. But, yeah. I love uh, that book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I've been so busy working on the program and getting that out for November, a rich life and business, which is going to be awesome. Well, um, Anita, we will link to that in the show notes and everybody can go, we'll, we'll link to your website and also to your book and everything. And, uh, people can follow up and, and get all of that information. And we'll also link to some of the other things that we mentioned in the show. And thank you. I just want to, um, thank you for being on the show. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you. I love, I love, you know, when we met in California, I absolutely loved it. I knew you were somebody that I wanted to get to know better. So I'm so glad we've done this podcast and I'd love to have you on my podcast as well. Yes. And, I think uh, we're scheduled share. to do it. 
Yeah, share your aha moments, right? So it's so important so we can hear more of your story. All right, thank you. That's it for our show today. Remember, if you need support to live your well woman life, head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join us. Our monthly live event, Well Woman Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women, leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week.